Wow. Hi, y'all. I'm a South Carolina, we say y'all a lot. <laughs> um, I know you want to record this. I don't know if you're going to post it because I don't know where it's going. I know what I got. Huh? It's over. That's fine. I don't know if you're going to want to post it by the time I'm done. I don't know. I, sh I should be calling this. You know there's a show on Fox with four um, women of color. It's called The Real. I feel almost like that's what I need to entitle this right now, <laughs> is the real. Is the real. We're talking about the state of the heart. Some of the stuff I want to share, I don't think is going to be pleasant. You, I don't think it's going to be pleasant because it isn't pleasant to feel. It isn't pleasant to experience, but it's the real. Um, several weeks ago, and I think I may have shared this, um, we were in service and my wife and I went to join um, to Mitchell's soccer game. And we left and we came back and we were having um, vision builders meeting, fellowship. And we were talking and we were sharing it. And one of the things that I said when I got up, when it was, I guess it was my turn to speak, and I said, I don't know what the H-E-L -L I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know who I am right now. And it may have kind of thrown somebody off balance, but I had to be real. In that moment, that's not my existence, but in that moment, I really felt like I didn't even know what I was doing, what I was supposed to be doing. I love God. I trust him. But I really didn't know what I, what I was doing. There's something about being bare before the Lord like that. It doesn't feel like a good place. It doesn't feel like a Christian place to feel. It doesn't feel like a leadership place to be. But there's something about that. And Pastor said how he appreciated me just being real like that. And he began to share some things on his heart that God had given him, how God had even delivered him and, and delivered him in some ways. And I began to take notes. It's like, okay, God, I know this is what I feel. This is not where I'm staying. This is a place that I'm visiting for the moment, but I'm not living here. I'm not establishing res residence in this crazy place. But I'm acknowledging that right now I feel kind of in a crazy place, an unsettled place. And so last night, as I was like cleaning, you know, my wife and I were kind of cleaning up the house and preparing for our vacation and doing a bunch of stuff. And I was sitting on my bed and I got this call probably about nine o'clock last night. And um, that was the call from pastor, you know. So it wasn't like, you know, a week or two ahead of time, anything. But I got this call about nine o'clock last night. And he said, you know, and he, you know, shared what he shared. and. Uh, he's, I said, he said, you know, if you need to, like, you know, call me back, you know, I give it. I said, give me a second, okay? And he shared that I could, and you know, incorporate my wife. However, I felt left to share, share what was on my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not coming up here to preach to you. You know, I'm not coming up here to, you know, I'm just coming to share. And um, I said, give me a second. I hung up with him. I told my wife that. My wife said, you got it. She's like, she just like stepped back. I said, oh, so you're just going to leave me out there. But um, but I know that we, she wasn't punking on me. You know, that's not what was happening at all. Um, and I called Pastor probably about, literally probably about six, seven, eight minutes later and said, you know, Pastor, by faith, yes. I said, of course, yes. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm doing. But of course, yes, I'm going to go by faith. I'm, you know, you, you call me. I'm going to do this. I don't know what I got. This. He said, just say what's on your heart. So here's some of the real We started this year off um, with a kind of, I started off with a kind of a hope and excitement. Anybody besides me, 2018, you know, hope and excitement, okay? Um, this was slated to be the year of accomplishment with power through love. Oh, and it was that, by the way, don't get me wrong, it was that, but not necessarily in the way that I expected or that I had hoped. Um, I trust God and I take him at his word. This year I started off working on a TV series, um, playing an extremely wealthy power player. Uh, how appropriate, I thought. Okay, that's nice. They got me, you know, it wasn't lines, but that's why I was this rich guy. And I thought that was an appropriate role for me to be doing. I had two days of it, so I got good pay that day. Um, I had just finished shooting an independent film in which I played a, a crooked police chief. I got to 
act like somebody very different from myself. If you're an actor, that's what you want to do. Do somebody that's very different from yourself. So, um, and I was showered with praise for my work by nearly everybody that I encountered, all of the crew, all of the staff, everybody. They, were, they said I exceeded the expectations. So the praise came from it. Um, you know, I was treated close to the way that I thought that I should be, you know, at this stage in my life. I, you know, was, was flown out of town and, and, you know, put up in a hotel room, my own room. I didn't have to share with anybody. And they brought me back and forth to the set. And it's like, okay, this feels nice. And I think I may, have, I know I've shared this with you before, but it's like, this feels nice. This feels good. This feels like how it's supposed to be. Um, when I came back, I was getting fairly consistent background work. I booked a film trailer and a music video and was on a roll, you know. Um, and since I got the film on my own, and um, since I got this particular film on my own, my, my agent began to send me on more auditions. But I didn't feel like they were typing me right. And they were, she was putting me in places, in sort of character roles that, that I could do because I'm an actor, but that weren't necessarily the best type for me. And so I really didn't think you know, I was going to have much of a chance. So I sent her an email outlining the type that tends to fit me or how people tend to view me when they see Michael Leonard James, what you know, roles that are better fitting for him. Um, and they heard me. And they began to send me on numerous more age appropriate and, and, and type appropriate auditions. Um, this year, I went on quite a few auditions. With one exception, I didn't book anything all year, all year. Um, the, the auditioners, they were, they were complimentary. Very complimentary. I call it the kiss of death. When they start praising you too much at the audition, it means you probably didn't get the role when they tell you how good you are. I mean, I was working it. I, I had my mother send me my father's dress blue uniform um, to, I had some audition there where the character was a military person. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go, you know, the full thing, I'm gonna give it everything. I'm gonna do everything that I know to do. I'm gonna put in the work. Um, you know, if I was a prison guard, I put on clothes that kind of look like that. If I was a lawyer detective, I had on one of my tailored suits. Um, though it's not always necessary, there were times when I would memorize the lines completely, and I'd go in there ready. Um, there was a time when I, I would work on the appropriate accents. Sometimes I'd have accents in there. Um, I had one situation where, and I thank God for Edwards, who's not here, but I had to learn a little bit of Haitian Creole. You know, I didn't have to, but the role called for it. So I said, I'm going to go there prepared for it. So I called Edwidge, and we translated something. She ran it back to me, and I was ready. You know, I was, like, ready to do this. You know, I'm a legitimate president of this country, you know. And I was ready to do this and excited about that. And, and, and I went in, and, um, you know, the casting agent, you know, he told me, he said, you are very prepared, you know. And I'm like, you know, and I had a full uniform on by the, you know, um, and, and I would get things from different casting agencies like you, no one else nailed this like you. Um, this is perfect. Um, when they asked me to make an adjustment in a line read, I'd give them just what they wanted. And most said that adjustment was great, thank you. Um, I even asked what they wanted and they'd give me an adjustment and I'd do it. And it went great, at least it seemed to. But I did not book it. And I didn't book it, and I didn't book it, I didn't book it again in this year of accomplishment with faith, with power through love. Um, at Pastor's brilliant suggestion, um, I emailed one of the agents, and it was the only, one, only email I could find because I was looking for some, and, and I complimented her and thanked her for her time and asked for her critique. Because um, during my audition, she kept telling me how much she loved my voice. My lo Can I tell you I love his voice? I love, she kept saying, I love your voice. I love your voice. I'm like, okay cool, this is a good thing, I got a call back. So this one looks like this one may happen. Never heard from her again. I don't even know if the show happened. Um, I saw an ad for, I saw an ad for a theater, for, for a show, for a theater and director I had previously worked for. This particular theater and director, I won an award as best performer by a male actor in a musical. So I won an award for them. Not for them, but I won an award during their show. So I had proven myself in, in a very real sense. And I said, okay, there's a show that I saw. I'm going to go there. And, you know, I should get something because not only did I win an award for them, they called me back to do an, uh, a concert for the, 
the the composer that did the show that I, that composed the show that it had passed, and they called me back to do a concert, which they paid me nicely. Concert, so I'm like, okay, I got it in with them. So okay, that's an inroad. I got some favor. I can go in right here, and I can do this, and and I should either get this role or get something else. I went in. I dressed appropriately in black. For the character, I sang from the Phantom of the Opera in my best baritone voice, and I gave it to him, and I lit it up, and I knew that I did because I saw them sit and then kind of lean in and look at me and begin to squint. And when I read for them, I read, and you know, like, you know, you could just see how how it changed the 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 temperature or the timbre of the room. Huh? They looked like they were riveted. I had three auditions that day. Three, one for TV and two for theater. Casting was smiling, said how they loved my song and the interpretation of my character doing that reading. I never even got a call back. The one other diversity commercial, the one diversity commercial after donning full ethnic regalia, I mean, I had on my African gear, I was affecting the accent. I got called back for this one. They told my agent how much they loved me, that I was wonderful, and they had me do all these different acting exercises, and I was just doing it, you know, different expressions and stuff, and I was just doing it. And the one that I did get, I booked it. I had a date. They kept moving the date, but I had a date. And then I got word that they decided to go another way. I said it was the wrong way. <laughs> Famous last words in the business. This happens, you know, you get it, looks like it's going. But it ended up being another way. Now, this so far just doesn't sound like a very positive message, right? It doesn't sound like I'm being very encouraging to you or like I'm very encouraged. Um, in fact, minus the loss of lives, it was starting to feel very Job-ick to me. Do you understand what I'm saying? To me, how I was feeling. I mean, you know, I didn't have my children and wife died and lose everything, everything, but it was starting to, career-wise, it was starting to feel very Job-ick to me. Like it just wasn't happening. I honestly, man of God, ask God, God, am I cursed? What's happening here? I'm going on more auditions and more and more, and I am praying beforehand, and I am believing you, and I'm just like, I know something's happening. I know this is the year's accomplish a year of accomplishment, and I'm going, and it's almost like they see me, and they love, and they talk about it, but it's almost like they aren't even allowed to hire me, and God, I don't have other income. This is what I'm doing. Um, I was beginning to feel sometimes like I, almost like I had the reverse Midas touch, you know, but Midas who touch everything, it turned to gold. Well, I was feeling like everything I was touching was turned into rusted iron. And that's the way that I felt. It's tough. My career, doing, I was one point doing some consistent background work. That was starting to drop. It's like, God, what am I doing? What, am I doing something wrong? Please tell me, show me, am I doing something wrong? Am I, am, am I not saved enough? These are real feelings, people. I'm telling you this is the real because these are my real feelings. I don't know whether you go through that or not. That's not my business. That's between you and God. But I can tell you what I have felt and what I have experienced. And I love God. And I know that he loves me. I know that I know that I know that he loves me. But these feelings have been real. Very real. I've been praying. And doing what I believe God wants me to do. Now, I've been smart. I've read the Bible, so I wasn't saying I deserve that. I wasn't Job in the sense that I'm saying that I deserve this. You know, God, I do this. You know, I do this on. I do this. I do that. You know, I had better sense than to know that. It's like, God, there's something not happening here. Career-wise, my family is, is, is flourishing. I, my, my marriage is flourishing. My, my kids are growing. And, and it's like, but in this, in this one thing, in my career, it seemed like there was barrenness, no life. I prayed and stood and labored to be the best that I can be at my craft. <laughs> I finally got a vocal coach after much prodding from my wife and even agent to prepare for auditions. It was a relationship I looked forward to. 
we worked on Monday. She was willing to work like for hours and hours, and it was just a blessing. She wasn't she wasn't even charging me anything, which is crazy because I was looking at fees and stuff. There were like a hundred. Somebody wanted a hundred and sixty dollars for an hour. Somebody wanted something. It's like I'm not gonna do that. Even if I can afford that, I'm just not doing that right now. And she wasn't even charging me. I took some money with me that I was going to absolutely pay her. And I did. And I, may, I had to make her accept it. But she seemed to be enjoying it as much as I was. And I was learning. And she was teaching me things. And she would tell me that, you know, I didn't believe that. You know, which I didn't believe what you're saying. You know, she'd be real with me. And I appreciate that. Now let's work on this. Let's work on this character. And it was a good relationship. That was on a Monday. I got a call on Thursday from a daughter that she had passed in her sleep. God, what's going on? What's happening? I finally get a vocal, vocal coach. And I don't mean to sound selfish, but like she goes and dies on me. She didn't die on me. She had one daughter. My heart breaks for her because her father passed years ahead. And this girl is 17. And I guess she looked through her mother's phone. I had just, just met this woman. Already love her. Just met her. She died. So there were times during this year where I felt, honestly, I'll be honest, frustrated, disappointed, sometimes angry. I don't live here, but these are places that I visit. For the first time, I got to say this year, this time, this year, different times, I felt borderline depressed. That's not something as, as, as a Christian I should be saying, but I, I, I can't. I can't do anything but be real. If, if I want to allow God to do anything into me, do anything for me, I have to be honest. But I am still here. I'm still here. You are still here. There is life. And it's abundant life. <laughs> I've sat under the word for years. I've read it. I've listened. And I've done my best to submit it. Of course, I've screwed it up as much as anybody else or messed up. But by God's grace uh, and his mercy, I'm here. I'm alive. As long as I have breath and life, there is hope. I preached last time I was here, I spoke about, spoke about hope. I have hope. God showed me that, that career-wise, I really believe it's God, that it's wintertime. Career-wise. Because um, I look around and in my career and like there's little greenery with few exceptions, flowers and trees look barren. It's often cold and wet. Strong winds come and blow things over, and it appears that there's utter desolation in my career. But the truth is, at my age, I've experienced scores. Anybody know what a score is? How many years is a score? 20 years. I've experienced scores of winters. Enough to know that there's a lot going on in the wintertime that isn't seen with the naked eye or the unspiritual eye. Underground, there's another realm where there's growth and activity taking place in the winter time. Scientifically, we learned that as long as the ground isn't frozen, tree roots continue to grow deeper in the winter in search for moisture and nourishment and water. In the winter time, when all looks barren, my heart, I've experienced some things, but it has not waxed cold. Hmm. During this winter, season-wise, in the winter of, 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 of my career, my resolve 
is strengthened. My resolve is strengthened. My determination is strengthened. My hope is strengthened. In this year of accomplishment, where it looks like winter, I'm accomplishing that. There's undercurrent. There's stuff going on inside of me that's changing, that's not accepting what looks like desolation. I know better. Give up. To do what? Be what? Something other than what God has called me to be? That's not an option. That's not an, it's not an option for me. It's just not. Hmm, my God. I am who I am. I am who he says I am. The Bible says I'm more than a conqueror. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Thank you, God. I'm a conqueror, God. This People so help me, God, I'm not saying this as a cliche. This is my reality. As much as all that stuff I told you before was real and felt real, this right now is real. I am an overcomer. 1 John 2, 13, 14, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. Oh, I've seen some deliverance in my life that you'll never know about. seen it I've experienced it I've overcome some things you've overcome some things I've accomplished some things with power through love some things that aren't as visible to the naked eye to the unspiritual eye my God I said in winter plants still seek moisture and water Pastor said something a couple weeks ago about water. And that's how this whole thing even started for me. He said, living water has things and information flowing in and flowing out. Inside of me, inside of you are rivers of living water. There's information, there's stuff flowing in and flowing out. We can't just take in stuff has to come back out. So I know that God is working. There is activity going on where sometimes we can't even see unless we open our spiritual eyes. God is opening my eyes in this process. Even when I feel bad, even when I feel desolate, even when I feel those feelings, because that's all they are, is feelings. They're not my reality. God, I thank you for your truth. Stagnant water, and this is what Pastor said, by definition has no movement. Nothing can enter or leave but living water, which is what flows inside of her, us. The scripture, the woman at the well, John 4, 10 to 14, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me drink, thou, would have asked, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence, from whence, has, from whence has thou that living water? He goes on to say, but whoever drinketh of the water that I shall give shall never thirst of water springing up unto everlasting life. Inside of my belly, inside of your belly is flowing rivers of living water because that's what God put in there. There is activity going on. There is growth. There's parts of us that are seeking that water, seeking to grow and mature. There is life and living water in me and in us. And as long as we let it flow in and out, that we have to, this activity, we, we got to let it flow in and out. We can't just sit and just take it in, expect stuff to happen. We got to let it flow even, even, even. I've had to proclaim things even though they aren't apparent. I've had to speak things that didn't seem to pan out. But they can't stop me from speaking the truth. They can't stop us from speaking the truth. 
Pastor talked about, you know, we, you know, the thing that didn't happen, didn't seem to happen. You know, we should not be embarrassed about that. And he reminded me of Joyce Myers, who said, I'd rather have, what is it? I'd rather, let me get it right. Thank you. Did y'all hear that? I'd rather believe 100% of something and get some of it than believe in nothing and get all of it. I'd rather be in that place. Although I know the things that God has for me is beyond my imagination anyway, because that's what he said. I had not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Amen? I've experienced, yeah, so I've experienced some winters. But I've experienced in every other area an equal amount of spring, summer, and autumn. I know victory in areas, in different areas. This one's not going to be any different. It may be winter for me in some ways. It may be winter for you in some place, whether, whatever it is that you believe in God for, whether you stand it for. But it's not always going to be. But while that activity, just, just don't let your heart wax cold because if the heart has to stay, hearts to stay warm, there has to be a place for God to be able to move. Don't let your heart wax cold. Get angry if you want to. Scream and shout if you need to. That's what you need to do. But get back to yourself. Okay? Get back to yourself. God is not bothered by our tantrums. That's not excusing tantrums, but he knows our frame. He knows that. But then get back and say, God, help thou my unbelief. I've had to pray, God, make my heart right in some situations, and and my heart doesn't feel quite right. But you know what? What man, when his son would ask for bread, would he give a stone? I would ask for fish, would he give a serpent? How much more should the Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? How much more should he give us the, 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 the heart? How much more should he give us the heart if we ask? Let's just start by understanding the state of our heart. I've, I've exposed mine. But I'm going to have a testimony on the other side of this as well. But I got a testimony right now. I want you what you know. The testimony, I can't wait till I get to the other side to begin to speak life, to begin to trust God. It's right here in this place, in this place that seems like it's barren. That's where I call it forth and call that which be not as though it were. Because I expect manifestation. I expect it. Amen?